Amen, amen, and amen. Welcome to Salvation Station. I am Pastor B, bringing the Word of God to you. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow up on what we were talking about last week. And what we this whole purpose is, is about understanding salvation. I'm going to kind of go back and forth through a couple of things just to kind of make sure that we're doing more than just uh, throwing information out to you. We want you to understand what we are bringing to you and why these things are important. So always before we go to the Word of God, we go to the Lord in prayer. So let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you with open hearts and minds, ready to receive your word. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus the Christ, and the salvation he offers. Help us to understand the depth of your grace and to live by faith. Guide your decision and your tolerance for us through our hearts so that we may grow closer to you and to each other and we pray in Jesus name amen and amen amen saints well I left off with you last week at Romans chapter 6 verse number 23 and what we were covering in Romans chapter 6 verse number 23 was for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life what's important here is the gift of God is eternal life I didn't finish that passage yet again that's Romans chapter 6 verse number 23 it says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life eternal life let's think about that eternal life eternal life how it says through Jesus Christ our Lord okay through Jesus Christ our Lord so that says a lot about Jesus Christ but we have to make sure we understand just to make sure we get a good clear picture here I want to speak to those who maybe don't really believe much about the Word of God or maybe those who haven't been raised in an environment which is conducive to understanding the Word of God. I even want to speak to those who are in church every Sunday. Every Sunday morning they're in Sunday school, they're going to church, but outside of church their language hasn't changed. Their ideas of the way they think of people hasn't really changed. Therefore, what they're doing is showing up. Let's talk about the wages of sin that are death. Because this affects our salvation. Amen. And the whole purpose of us here on the front steps of this church each Sunday morning is to try to bring an understanding of salvation to those who are willing to hear it. Amen? Now we can go to Romans chapter 5 verse number 12 and again what I said to you before is that I don't want to bring the Word of God to you without opening up the scriptures so we can prove that what we have to say is not just something that I want to talk about, but this is something that the Word of God speaks about. So we're going to cross-reference Romans 6.23. We're going to cross-reference it to Romans chapter 5. And let's look at verse number 12 and see what it says. Romans chapter 5, verse number 12. And it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned what does that actually mean pastor b 
It means that everyone who has been born into this world is born into sin. Let me put it like this. A child is born in a few months they're still with their mother. Let me ask you this question. How soon is it before that child will sin? Just as soon as they can. Not because they're choosing to do it, not because that's what they want to do, but because that is our nature from the fall of Adam. So understand this very important that you understand this, that death has had its reign from Adam up until Moses. So let me talk about that. What was going on between Adam and before Moses came on the scene? Well, death. There was no morality there was no nothing. We, we read in the Bible, we heard about Sodom and Gomorrah. We have heard how they just didn't care about anything. We understood that, you know, it was nothing that they really had any thought about. I want to teach you something this morning about salvation. I want you to be able to understand salvation and understand that it was prophesied years before Jesus came here. And by that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Psalms, chapter 2. Psalms, chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse number 1. The reason I'm going to Psalms, chapter 2, is because I want to outline to you how much the word was prophesied before Jesus Christ was ever born a human on this earth. Let's read this together. Psalms chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. And it says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Important here is the kings of the earth. Now pay attention here. It says, The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. What is that talking about, saints? I'm going to read it again. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the capital L-O-R-D and against his anointed saying, verse number three, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. So, okay, Pastor B, what, what, is, that, what is that telling us today? Well, if you think about it, if you think about it, the Pharisees wanted to crucify Jesus, but they said that they didn't have the authority to kill anyone or put anyone to death, but they stoned people to death on a regular basis. Amen? So what I'm saying is the authorities here that spoke of in Psalms chapter 2, where it says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together so we're talking about Rome and we're talking about the Pharisees we're talking about Rome which were the Gentiles and we're talking about the Pharisees which were Abraham's offspring who said we live by the word of Abraham so they came together took counsel and Psalm says against the Lord now, if you've heard me before, you know that I've already explained to you whenever you see LORD in all capital letters in your Bible, it's referring to the Son of Man. It's referring to the Son of God. It's referring to who the Son of God is, which is Jesus the Christ. It's not saying Jesus Christ, but who is the LORD? The LORD is Jehovah. Who is Jehovah? Jehovah is the Son of God. Amen. So it's very important that you understand these things when you hear them and when you read them. Because if you don't, then you cannot understand what the Word of God is. You cannot understand how this relates to where we are today. You can't understand how it relates to 
since the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. We're talking about Psalms. Psalms were recorded way before Jesus Christ was on the scene. I'm gonna go to the next verse. It says, verse number four, Psalm 2, four, it says that, no, it says, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in desertion. So it's saying, our Lord, our God, watched exactly what they did. And in his time, he said that the word of God is saying that he laughed at it. He laughed at it. And then it goes on to verse number five and says, Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. So wrath is coming because of what they've done. Amen. Verse number six, it says, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Verse seven, I will declare the decree, the Lord, again, capital L-O-R-D, the Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. Come on now. This day have I begotten thee. Now a lot of us take that to Christmas and say this is the date that Jesus was begotten. Well, if you understand the word of God, the begotten son here in Psalms 2 is speaking of when they took counsel to kill him. And he became the begotten son upon the day that he was resurrected. Amen. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the day he became the begotten son. And this is what Psalms is talking about in verse number number seven that I will declare and decree the Lord shall said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Verse number eight, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thine possession. This is the same thing speaking of when God told Abraham his descendants would be as the stars. You see, we have to make sure that we take the word of God and place it in its proper perspective because the Bible isn't written, it has chapters in it, but it's not written for us to read verse by verse and think that it's chronologically set up. It's not that way. That's the reason that we need to have, we need to have, and I'm gonna say this again, we need to have, our wisdom and we must have the Holy Spirit to guide us. So we must pray for wisdom and pray for revelation while we read the Word of God. Every time you read the Word you should find something else new. Amen. Verse number nine, thou shalt break them with thy rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Again this is Psalm but it's reading and it's speaking of when the Israelites will be in bondage in Egypt. You see what it says? Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. That's how they were treated in Egypt. So this word in Psalms is talking about something that hasn't even begun yet. Amen? Psalms 10 it says, Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth serve the Lord again all capital letters L-O-R-D serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling now let me just let me just define one more thing here when we read the word fear in the word of God it depends on the context it's being used in here fear is speaking of reverence it's not saying be afraid and scared and shaky is saying serve the Lord with reverence in other words with respect you know and rejoice with trembling amen verse 12 it says kiss the son lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled 
but a little. Blessed are all that put their trust in him. Amen. Now, let's just think about what I just went over. We brought all of that from what? We brought that all from Romans chapter 6, verse number 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. It's important that we understand who that eternal life is through. How do we get that eternal life? It's not just something that's given to us. It's just not something that we can take because we decide we want it. It's something that we have to be given. Now, I'm going to say this to you, and I may, I may, you know, I may touch some people's heart with this, but I want you to understand that your pastor at the church or no one can give you grace. No one can place you into the body of Christ. Amen. You can walk an aisle, you can confess your sins, but if it's not in your heart, if you're not believing it 100%, if you haven't changed the way that you live, if your action hasn't changed the way you live, I'm going to say it like this. You haven't received and the Holy Spirit has not placed you in the body of Christ because the only way you get into the body of Christ is the Holy Spirit will place you into the body of Christ. Amen? That's the only way you're going to get there. Because ain't no pastor on this earth, no clergyman or nothing is going to be able to place you into the body of Christ except the Holy Spirit. Amen? All right, now, what I want to go into is I want to talk a little bit about understanding what this salvation is all about. Romans chapter 1. Let's go there. Turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 1. And I want you to go to verse number 16. Romans chapter 1 and go to verse number 16. And what we're going to talk about here is what is the Apostle Paul talking about when he says the gospel of Christ. Romans chapter 1 verse number 16 and it reads as follows. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto what we're here to talk about, salvation. I'm going to read that again. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Now listen closely to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, the Greek. So why is Paul saying to, to, unto, unto God, unto salvation? Why, what is he talking about? And when he, when he also says he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What gospel is Paul talking about here? You see, some new versions of the Bible, they just kind of water down that word salvation. And even many church people do not really comprehend or understand what is in the one word salvation. Most people think of salvation as just an easy escape to get into heaven. That's not the case. That's not exactly what it is. But you see, the final words here is this. It means so much more than that. But I'd like to take you, uh, just take, take, take a time to look up some scriptures. So on, on this here, on this word salvation, what it's associated with. So let's go to, um, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, why am I going to 1 Corinthians chapter 15? Because I want to tell you and show you what the Apostle Paul is speaking about in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, where he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Nine times out of ten, when you hear the word gospel, the average Christian is going to be thinking of John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, some parts of that. But let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And again, there is only one portion of scripture that lays out the gospel completely and clearly. It lays out the gospel. When I say the gospel, I'm talking about the gospel for us today. Since the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel I'm talking about. Now remember, Mark, Matthew, John, they all walked with Christ. Amen. They walked with Christ in his earthly ministry. 
and Jesus came to preach about the law that was given to Moses okay he came to preach about the law that was given to Moses that man had to keep that could they could not keep so make sure we understand that first Corinthians chapter 15 I'm gonna start here moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. In other words, that's where you're positioned. By which also ye are saved. In other words, it's saying, nothing else saves us. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Now listen to what it says here. What I preach unto you unless ye have believed in vain. That's important. That's important. Because he is saying that he preached the gospel to you. Now, where is the gospel that Paul is talking about? It's right here in 1 Corinthians. The gospel Paul is talking about is in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And I just read verse number one out of that. Now, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which ye also have received, and wherein ye stand, in other words, your position. Now, verse number two, I'm going through the gospel now. I want you to understand, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I just read verse one, now I'm reading verse two. We're talking about the gospel for us since the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Verse number two, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. I just covered that with you, right? So you understand, it's talking about what you believe. Amen? Now let's go on to verse number three. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, that how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. We're gonna cover that right there. According to the scriptures. I just showed you a few things, but according to the scriptures, it's very important that you understand what scriptures. Because we can hear this and say, okay, he died according to what scriptures are we talking about? Well, let's just be very clear. According to the scriptures is what I covered in Psalms chapter two that I just talked about. Because it said that they would take counsel to kill him. Those are the scriptures that we're talking about. He died for that according to the scriptures. Now let's look at verse number four. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number four. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. For the preaching of the cross is to them that is foolishness. I'm at Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, right here, verse number 18. For preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. Now see that word saved is, is taken really lightly a lot of times because people say all the time, yeah, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. And you ask them, how do you know you're saved? And, they, and most of the time, they, they, they don't have an answer for you. Well, the way you know that you're going to be saved is that the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. You'll know by the Spirit of God. Amen? Not by what somebody tells you, or not by just repeating a verse after someone that says something about being saved. That's not going to save you. Let's put it like this. I want to make sure that I'm really, really clear on this because it has happened and we've, we've come across it before. There's been pastors that has fallen and there always will be because we are human beings and we are fallible. We will make mistakes. We are going to sin. That's the whole reason that Jesus was, was the, came here for us. Now, you say to yourself, I know there was a pastor that, you know, he was he was a great pastor and, and he, the church was wonderful, 
but all of a sudden he he ended up with a he ended up with another woman and left left his left his family. What do you say about that? Well, let me tell you what it is about that. Again, like I said, only the Holy Spirit can place you into the body of Christ. If a person that was a pastor ends up doing something of that nature, here's what I'm going to tell you. And you may not want to hear it, but here's what I'm going to tell you. Nine times out of ten, he was never really saved in his heart. Outward on the outward side, what you see could have looked like anything that's great. But I've told you before, and the Bible has told you, that Satan can appear as an angel of light. Satan can appear as an angel of light. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit within you, you will not even know. You won't even be able to feel it or understand it. Now let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 23. It says, But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, it's a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, it's foolishness. Verse 24, But unto them which are called, that's an important word there, for them that which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13. I want to use these different verses that's in the Bible to explain salvation and to let you understand what salvation is. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13, and it reads as follows. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye, what's the next word? After that ye believed. After ye believed. When it says believed, it's talking about in your heart. It's talking about you have a change of the way that you see things the way you think about things, the way you want to live your life, the way that you speak to people, the way that you respond to people. That's what this is. Also, after that, ye believe in your heart. Then it says, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So I want to point it out to you, and, and I want to make sure that you see it, because it's in the Bible. It says, also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit. After ye believed. Now, we get a lot of times that we see people come down the aisle and they, re they, re they repeat after a prayer that they believe and, and they repeat the prayer and then within two weeks, they have fallen into something else. Not because they wanted to, not because they chose to, but because they're humans. This is why we have to stay in communication with the body of Christ. Where is the body of Christ? The body of Christ is the church. The church are the people, not the building. The church are the people. So once you believe and you want to be placed into the body of Christ, you must stay in constant communication and fellowship with other believers. Amen? This is important. Now, I want to talk about Peter here for a moment, because see, the Apostle Peter played a very pivotal role as far as Paul's gospel, believe it or not. Because see, Peter was 100% Jew. I mean, he was Jewish in and out, just the same as the Apostle Paul was, Jew. Now, Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, this is close, not far before Peter was actually martyred. He said this, and Peter was speaking to his Jewish fellows, his Israelite, men of Israel. When you're reading the Bible, make sure you understand who they're talking to. 
Because if he says men of Israel, that's exactly who he's speaking to. Not the Gentiles, men of Israel. But Peter says here, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is, what's the next word? Salvation. Salvation. Now listen to what he says after that. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Who is Peter talking to? Peter's talking to the Israelites. Peter's telling the Israelites that Paul's gospel is what they need to be looking at. Henceforward, the law is what Peter and all the rest of the, the apostles were bringing to the men of Israel and the nation of Israel. Not Paul's gospel. Not Paul's gospel. And why would Peter back Paul up at this particular point? Because there was a time when God had Peter go to a Gentile's home, and his name was Cornelius. Cornelius sent for Peter, and God had told Peter to go to see that Gentile. Now, in his days, a Jew would be, wouldn't be caught dead in the house of a Gentile. Peter went to this Gentile's house and this is where the beginning of the transformation and the changes began. Because the way that Peter understood the word of God from Jesus Christ's ministry while he was on this earth was, there was a way that you got into the Holy Spirit. And that way was, first of all, you had to believe. Second of all, you had to be baptized. Third of all, once you're baptized, the Holy Spirit should fall on you, in your heart. But what happened when Peter was at this Gentile's house, Cornelius? He began to tell Cornelius and his family about the Word of God. And while he was yet speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on them. And it fell on them and they believed. And when Peter said, Oh, what this is not this is not no, this is not the way it's supposed to be. So Peter had nothing else to say except for, well, is there any reason that these men and, and people can't be baptized? Why did he say that? He said that because at that point it was a completely different thing. That's not the way that they were, were presented to the body of Christ. They had to be baptized first. And once they was baptized, then they could receive the Holy Spirit. But in this Gentile's house, Cornelius, Peter was yet speaking about the word of God. And the Holy Spirit came on them without them being baptized. So that made Peter say something is changing here. But I'm saying all that to say this, to come back to 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. The reason that Peter is backing Paul up is because of what he witnessed almost 12 years ago. See, this is talking about what he witnessed 12 years ago. Had Peter not witnessed this 12 years ago, I don't believe Paul's apostle would have made it anywhere because God used Peter because he was a pillar of the 12 apostles to let all the Israel men know that the Apostle Paul is the way to salvation from this point on. Amen. And he didn't go back down to Jerusalem again. Not Peter. And he didn't go down, and he didn't go down there to do any, any, any of that, to be with anybody anymore. So what I want you to do is just remember, Paul is very, very serious about not receiving his gospel. And I'm going to say this again. What is his gospel, saints? His gospel, what is Paul talking about when he says my gospel? He's talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. If you don't get anything out of this today, I pray that you get the understanding that the gospel for salvation is outlined in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. That is the gospel for where we are at 
here today. Amen? Amen. Now look here. Our gospel has come primarily from the writings of who? Right? Because he is revealing things that are revealed to him from the Lord. When? When is he revealing these things? After the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. So what Paul is saying is he's bringing the gospel after Jesus Christ was crucified. That's why it's so important that you understand what Paul is saying is not what they were preaching when Jesus was walking on the earth. Amen? Jesus' ministry was regarding the kingdom of heaven. Paul's ministry is regarding the body of Christ, the grace of God. Two completely different things. All right? Make sure you understand that. After his resurrection and ascension, from where he is now seated at the Father's right hand. So always keep that in mind. In fact, the book of Hebrews chapter 6, let's look at that. I always like to use the Bible to define the Bible. The book of Hebrews chapter 6, turn there in your Bibles. The book of Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 1. And it reads this. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Did you catch that? Let me let you hear it again. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ. What are the doctrines of Christ? It's what he preached when he had his earthly ministry. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. So Hebrews chapter 6 says that, verse 1, it says that that's, we don't need to go that route anymore. Why is it saying that, saints? Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that you don't just stay there. You know, those are the beginning principles. Everything Jesus spoke about in Mark, Matthew, and Luke, and John, those gospels was about the beginning, the principles, the things that we must know and we must understand. We must understand these things, but we have to move on. We have to continue to grow. And Paul's gospel is a part of us growing. And I'm gonna give you an example of that. Think about in high school or in school period, education. There's no way that you can get into a higher area of mathematics, reading, or, or anything if you haven't had third or fourth grade mathematics or third or fourth grade reading, right? So that means that it's just impossible for you to understand anything if you haven't had that initial. But you don't stay there. You don't stay in third and fourth grade, right? You move on, building what you have learned. And that's what we have to do as Christians. We have to build off of the, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke so we can learn to understand, to move further, to understand more of what God's Word is. And the same way as with scriptures. We must keep moving further. Now, I'm going to close up here, but I want to bring something to you about the Apostle Paul speaks of uh, his referring to us, what he has received, so then we need to take notice of that. Now, reading on in the Gospel, 1 Corinthians verse 3, what I said before, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is all back in the Old Testament. It's just not written out this way. I showed you in Psalms chapter two, basically the timeline that spoke exactly about what was about to happen. So no one understood it then. No one knew what was gonna happen then. However, now where we are today, we do get opportunities. We do get a chance to understand what that was all about. So he died and he died for our sins, the sins of the world, as full payment for this sin penalty that we all deserve. But he didn't stay dead, he rose from that victorious. In Jesus' name I pray, saints.
not going to take you any longer, any further. But Pastor B is so happy to be a part of the Salvation Station. I, 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 I implore you to come out, look us up, ask questions. Don't be afraid. We want to bring you to understand what salvation is and why it is so important for us all on the face of this earth today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to bring Sister Brown back up to you so she can close us out. Sister Brown. Amen. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. God bless you, sister. God bless, bless you. you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. What's our time? Uh, our time right now is... Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you for joining us again on the steps. 45 minutes. We did 45 minutes right here. Perfect, perfect. 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. We ask that you pray with us for one hour. Pray for our young people. Pray for our city. Pray for our nation. For salvation. Salvation. And Pastor B spoke about salvation in the essential book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Now that's a key verse right there. Keep in memory. We cannot keep in memory something that we have not heard or something that we have not read or have been exposed to. It is imperative, imperative that we read the Word of God, that we read the Word of God for ourselves. Salvation, as we stand out here at the Salvation Station every week and plead and present to you the urgency of being saved, the onus falls on us as individuals individuals. We cannot be saved, but at first we must believe. And then once we believe, we must receive and obey God's word. And it's in its, it's in its entirety. God's word is true, and we must obey God's word. We're here presenting scriptures from God's word regarding salvation. But at some point, we each will have to eat the whole bowl of the word of God. It's not about denominations. It's not about preferences and pet peeves. It's about leading you to the importance of the word of God of studying the Word of God, knowing the Word of God, and hiding it in your heart that you may not sin against the Lord. Amen. So we thank you for joining us another day on the steps to pray, Salvation Station, for our young people, our children, our city, and our nation. So many people are going away from you, transitioning, to heaven or hell. Do not be deceived. God will not be mocked. We, uh, uh, funerals attend, uh, funerals happen on a daily basis, multiple funerals. And when we attend a funeral, we want to speak highly of those who have gone on before. But there is a choice. We must choose today whom we will serve. Night comes, we won't have a chance to choose. That means when we close our eyes and we're suddenly in the presence of the Lord, we're not going to have a chance, to, a choice. We're not going to have a choice. We're only going to have a uh, choice. a count of our life in this body. This body is temporal. We will have a permanent body, either in heaven.
heaven, eternal glory, or hell, eternal damnation, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the worm never dies, and there's fire. So don't be deceived that every time someone transitions, they're automatically going to be in heaven for eternity and rest in peace. Some will rest in torment, will rest in torment. And you don't have to take my word for it. You have to read it for yourself. Because when we stand for before the Lord, we stand as individuals. We stand as individuals. And the Lord is not going to take any excuse about, I did not know. I didn't know. Therefore, I didn't live righteous. Or I didn't do right. Or I didn't repent. Because I didn't know. I didn't read it. Therefore, I didn't know. Some of us are comfortable with that excuse, that alibi. We're going to use that alibi when we stand before the Lord. But the Lord is going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You didn't bother to know me, so why should I know you? You didn't want to spend time with me, so why should I allow you to spend time in this eternal peace and eternal rest in my home? You didn't invite me into your home. Why do you feel so comfortable that you can live in my home and not speak to me and not want anything to do with me? That's ludicrous. That's ridiculous. We need to get our righteous right mind back. We need to learn this word read this word so we can't say oh pastor b told me to do this therefore i did this and i'm saved or sister brown told me to do this mr brown told me to do that pastor trevor told me to do this pastor rob told me to do this or that td jakes told me to do this joel Osteen told me to do that you know when we stand before the lord joel Osteen are not going to be standing beside us Dr. Tony Evans won't be standing there. No one. We will stand alone and give account. And God's eyes are piercing. It won't even, what you think will be a long explanation and the Lord playing back a videotape of your life. That's nonsense. He already sees what we're doing. And he gives us an opportunity to repent, repent, repent. Study the word, study the word. Now, Pastor B took you all through scriptures and asked you to turn. But how many of us even open our Bible? We just sit and look like we're being entertained. This is not entertainment tonight. This is not entertainment. This is your soul salvation. Because we do not know when is our time. We each have an assigned time to leave here, to transition. We don't know the time. Because if we did, we would fool around at the last minute and then try to act like we outsmarted God. Oh, I'm going to repent. No, the Lord is piercing. His judgment is piercing like a twin sword, able to divide the soul and the spirit. We're talking about Jehovah God Almighty. Jehovah God is not the man upstairs. He's not the old Papa with dementia, Alzheimer's. No, don't get it twisted. God is the creator, the great orchestrator. There's no getting around him, going under, going over. There's no fooling God. So why not come clean and be real? Be real with yourself. You're only hurting yourself. You're only hurting yourself. When we don't obey, these rules, these ordinances are for our good, for our protection. If we didn't have speed limits, we would zoom up and down the street crashing into each other. Come on. on our cell phones, bumping into telephone poles like we do all the time, all day long. Somebody here splits a telephone pole because they're trying to respond or TikTok or whatever is the latest social media. It's not social. Social media, that's a, a coy term to reel you in, to think that you're socializing. It's a lie. Social media is not socializing. It isolates. 
it isolates. The more you are on social media, the less you are in the community socializing. The streets are empty. You're afraid to go outside because you're in the house thinking you're socializing. You're not, and you're going to be held accountable that, accountable for that because the Lord says, do not forsake the assembling of yourself. That means he requires you to come out and be touchable. Friends are not your friends if they never touched you touched your life, been a part of your life. A friend is close, closer than a brother. A friend is there when you need it. A friend loves. A friend is real. A friend is not playing around on a device so that you can pretend as though you have a life. No, Jesus came to the earth and died, was crucified. If social media was so prevalent and important, he could have just sent us a text, a, an email, a phone call. He didn't have to come to this earth to die. Think about it. Think about it. Let's get back to our righteous right mind and stop playing around. This is serious. You're going to give an account. I'm going to give an account. And it's going to be heaven or hell. You're going to either have peace or damnation and fire. And all those people you say and rest in peace, we don't have the last say about who rests and who is tormented. They chose what they chose and they get what they get. And that applies to all of us equally. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The 1% has no advantage over, they can't take none of that with them, no matter how many billions they have. I don't care if they're the 1% hoarders. They can't take not one not, not one thing with them. But they're going to stand before the Lord as individuals and give an account. Now, I'm not saying rich people can't go to heaven. But it says it's easier for them to go through an eye of a needle than to go to heaven. Now, that doesn't mean a sewing needle. Back in the day, they had these uh, doorways that the merchants has, had to go through with their camels with merchandise stacked up so high that they had to crouch down and go through these doorways. That, that's what the Lord is talking about, that kind of eye of a needle. Mm -hmm. So there is a chance that a, a rich person can go to heaven, but let's get real, let's get right. Let's start faking like we don't understand. Only a transgressor does not understand. If you ask the Lord for more wisdom, power and understanding of his word he'll give you the wisdom and understanding. But if you're stuck in your own wisdom if we're going to continue to be a know-it-all we proud of everything i'm so proud i'm proud of me i'm proud of you i'm proud i'm proud god says he hates pride he hates pride that's one of the seven things god hates pride so let's get off of that pride how high horse and get down back down like the camel going through the eye of the needle, get back on our knees, get through that eye of the needle, get through that eye of the needle, humble ourselves and pray, seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, then we will hear from heaven and God will hear our call, forgive our sins, hear from heaven and forgive our sins and heal our man. Otherwise, we get what we get. No use whining and complaining about it. You don't want anything to do with the Lord, why should he have anything to do with you? Think about it. Let's get right. Get real. Get righteous. Amen. Until next time. God bless you. Amen. Be blessed.